so how how does you know a good thermal control system increase reliability so if you lessen temperature fluctuations if you isolate internal sections with different operating temperature ranges if you ensure effective and prolonged performance of the electronic devices through these techniques you're increasing the overall reliability and uh, aerospace pcbs have many applications um, like apu radio communications uh, etc so it's a it is an important uh, problem uh, to solve and for every problem there is a solution so if you don't see the solution in these in this presentation today please reach out to us and we can assist uh, next slide so parameters that impact the pcb thermal management so you definitely want good thermal conductivity you need to choose the materials with good operating temperatures you need to select components that satisfy the aerospace manufacturing standards and you need to uh, identify the hot spots and then what is the kind of the solution it's more copper um, really is a solution but you don't want to just add more copper it makes manufacturing difficult so really understand how much copper you need to achieve your effective uh, heat dissipation is really critical uh, next slide in terms of regulatory standards uh, really the key thing is in my opinion is the IPC specifications really understand them and make sure you're designing to designing for success to meet those specifications. Uh, next slide. I think the next slide is okay too. I think those are reference slides for everybody. So um, so the DFM, can you go back one slide, sorry. So in terms of DFM considerations uh, for aerospace and mil-spec PCBs, it's important to know that aspect ratio becomes even more difficult with the requirements of etch back and you know, wicking and all of that. So in your requirements for aerospace and mil-spec PCBs, be very cognizant of the aspect ratio and then the annular ring is always key in every design. And then the copper weight that you want, is it possible with the spacing requirements that you would need with that copper weight? So you have to really talk to your manufacturer and see how they're going to build it. They can start with a thicker foil, etch through that foil, and then plate up. That is, you know, what, what are they going to start with? What are they going to finish at? to get your heavy copper and then that would dictate your design rules. In terms of material selections for aerospace PCBs, uh, you should have selected material that has these types of uh, properties, you know, low CTE, um, low moisture absorption, uh, low, no outgassing or low outgassing. And then of course the th high thermal conductivity. So these are some things uh, that you should look out for. Uh, next slide. So instead of keeping it all in your head, we have a nice little tool that helps you select uh, materials based on the properties you're uh, looking for. And so that's what this is about. And I think we're handing off for a demo. Shit. Thank you. Um, you can see my screen. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. So this uh, this is a, a material selector tool. So uh, it has uh, material properties as given in the manufacturer data sheet. And it will help you compare to a more materials and also help you in selecting a proper material depending on your specific application. So for uh, uh, ease of selection, uh, we have 
some uh, basic um, criteria like uh, depending on the material type say if you have flex board or rigid board you can directly go to flex and run the tool and it will load the flex material by default there will be rigid material and there are no filters applied when you load the tool and so you can see at the bottom the entire material table list so then you can also have uh, you can say if you want a halogen free material you can say yes and you run the tool and you get a short list of materials which are halogen free same goes for very high thermal conductivity material you can just tick mark this option and when you say go submit all the materials which are very high thermal conductivity that that will be listed here so there will be no no other uh, filters that you need to apply so these are some of the broad classification also now you can also put filters depending on different properties like electrical properties uh, thermal properties chemical properties uh, mechanical properties we have a broad classification based on the speed loss so uh, for different frequency uh, operating frequency we have uh, four different classification as normal speed normal loss medium speed medium loss high speed and then very high speed application so you can choose from this drop down and the materials which are in those categories will be displayed to you we have this small calculator here which you can enter if you know what is the maximum frequency content that you are operating say if you are operating at 10 gigahertz as maximum frequency content uh, you can enter 10 here and it will calculate the fastest signal rise time and the highest data transfer rate so you can enter any one of these values and the other two will be automatically calculated and those values will be used as a filtering parameter then in detail if you can also use these sliders to adjust the range of the um, properties like here we have the dielectric constant or uh, dissipation factor you can also there's this single slider which you can use to adjust uh, the dielectric electrical strength of the material we have a drop down for cti class so class 0 1 2 3 so depending on that you can keep or by default the values will be all for all the drop downs you can see they all um, they will not be um, used in the filtering if you are they are left at by the default values for thermal properties we have the glass transition temperature um, thermal decomposition temperature the coefficient of thermal expansion in x y axis as well as in z axis so you can use these sliders to uh, limit the um, range of the city that you want so materials between 8 to 23 will be displayed for this scenario we'll keep it low you can also select uh, the thermal conductivity that you are looking for so can be normal high or very high um, so for chemical properties we have moisture absorption and kef resistant so you can use this slider to increase decrease the range of the material that you are looking for also kef resistance you can say if you want a kef resistant material just say yes or you can keep it all uh, under mechanical properties we have tensile modulus tensile strength can, can you click kef resistant i want to see what it says okay okay no uh it just say yes and when you click on uh go submit the materials with the kef resistant uh, those will be displayed i see yeah yeah so those are there I think I think people get it. Let me move back to the webinar. Okay. I'm really excited for you to uh, showcase huh. the new tool. Yes. Okay. Okay. So let's spend spend more time on that. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So further uh, filters will be for family, so polyamide and etc. You can also filter out using a material or manufacturer, say Isola or uh, any other like. Panasonic, Rogers. We can also filter out using the IPC slash number. So IPC and slash number. And when you click on go submit, the whatever filters you have used, the those materials which fit there will be displayed. You can click on view and it will display the um, all the properties in, um, in the data sheet. We also have uh, units, so we can convert the units to metric 
also the default will be your imperial unit system and you can change to metric so the wherever applicable the units will be converted also you can compare you can click on this check boxes with multiple materials and click on the compare and this will give us give you the side by side comparison of all the properties that are there so the directory constant the electrical strength and all the all the parameters basically um, yeah so this is this is the material selector tool yeah. i'm just structuring i can continue. thanks thanks Pranath.